Hi everyone, my name is Telma and welcome to my YouTube channel, God is Among Us. At first I was kind of shy to make this channel and even made many excuses not to start but with prayers and devotion, God gave me the encouragement to speak from the heart because we never know who may be listening and most importantly, never know who can benefit from it. Hence, why I am here. So, approximately three years ago, I was in a very dark place in my life and didn't know how to worship God. Eventually, I was enlightened by the Holy Spirit to understand this one aspect of truth. How should we worship God in spirit and in truth? And this is what I would love to share with you all here today. So, sit back, relax, and let's fellowship. First, let's read a Bible verse together. The Lord Jesus said, When the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The book of John, chapter 4, verses 23 to 24. So, after reading this Bible verse, we can see that the Lord requires that we worship God in spirit and in truth. For only in that way can we win his approval. But what does worshiping God in spirit and in truth really mean? Some people believe that diligently praying and reading the Bible every day is worshiping God. And some people believe that attending meetings on time and going to church every week is also worshiping God. There are still others who believe that toiling, working, forsaking, and expending for the Lord is also worshiping God, and so on. Well, there are many ways to practice worshiping God, but are we worshiping Him in spirit and in truth? Does God praise this kind of practice? I thought he did, so let's fellowship on this together. Let's talk about two aspects of truth together. The first one will be, are we practicing the truth or clinging to rules and rituals? And the second one will be, do we expend for God for the sake of loving and satisfying him? Well, what do you all think? <clears throat> well, let's focus on the first one. Are we practicing the truth or clinging to rules and rituals? So, from the moment we start believing in God, although we may pray, we read the Bible, we sing hymns every day, we even go to church, we praise the Lord and listen to sermons every week, does worshiping God in spirit and in truth involve only these external practices? Well. We can recall that when the Samaritan woman asked the Lord Jesus where she should worship God, and the Lord Jesus replied, The hour comes when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Book of John, chapter 4, verses 21 and 23 to 24. The Lord Jesus clearly told people God's will and requirements. It doesn't matter where one worships God, nor should one follow any rule or ceremony. But rather, one must worship God in spirit and in truth. This is also our principle of practice for worshiping God. But most of the time, we only focus our effort on external practices. We are careful to pray a little longer and say a little more. We read verses in the Bible over and over, trying to memorize them. We attend church in all weather, wind or rain, hot or cold. We organize all kinds of activities or put on various shows to praise the Lord. And we always take part with a positive attitude and so on. From the outside, we appear to be expending much effort and paying a high price to praise the Lord, and that we suffer greatly. But many times do we speak what's in our hearts when we pray to God? How many times during the course of reading the Bible, singing hymns, or attending church and listening to sermon, 
do we make efforts to be close to God and contemplate the Lord's words? How many times as we worship God do we seek the Lord's will and understanding of the Lord's words? Many people have practiced in this way for many years, yet they still don't understand the truth. They have no knowledge of the Lord, and when things happen to them, they still sin frequently and live within the bondage of and constraints of sin. In this way, we are faced with a serious problem, which is that most of the time we spend praying, reading the Bible, going to church, and listening to sermons. We are merely going through the motions. We are not actually worshiping God in spirit and in truth, nor are we practicing the truth to satisfy God. No matter how well we may keep to these external practices, God does not approve them. So, how can we worship God in spirit and in truth as we pray and read the Bible? Let's read a passage of spiritual words together. It reads, A normal spiritual life is to live a life before God. When praying, one can quiet one's heart before God. And through prayer, one can seek for enlightenment by the Holy Spirit, know God's words, and can understand the will of God. When eating and drinking the words of God, one can be clearer and more lucid on what God wants to do right now. And one can have a new path of practice and not be conservative, so that all one's practice is for the purpose of achieving progress in life. For example, one's prayer is not for the purpose of saying nice sounding words or to brawl before God to express one's debt, but rather it is to practice exercising one's spirit, to quiet one's heart before God, to practice searching for guidance in all things, and make one's heart a heart that is drawn toward new light every day, to neither be passive nor lazy, and to enter onto the right track of practicing God's words. Amen. So, from these words, we can see that they show us a path of practice. When we pray, we should take heed to speak to God from the heart, to speak honestly, and to confide in God with our practical difficulties and our real state. And when we read the Bible, when we sing hymns and go to church or even listen to sermons, our hearts must always focus on seeking the truth, seeking the enlightenment and the illumination of the Holy Spirit, contemplating God's words so that we can understand God's will through His words, know God, and have a path of practice and entry. Only this is to worship God in spirit and in truth. If we practice often in this way, we will experience continuous growth in our lives. Now, let's talk about the second aspect. Do we expend for God for the sake of loving and satisfying Him? Hmm. After we start believing in the Lord, many people forsake and expend for the Lord, and they carry out their tasks amidst great adversity. Some make frequent donations, some buy themselves with spreading the gospel, some get sermons wherever they go, and some even abandon their marriages and serve the Lord for the rest of their lives. Many people believe that this is also to worship God in spirit and in truth. But we have to consider whether we pay this price to love and to satisfy the Lord. If we think about it carefully, although we work and preach the gospel for the Lord, sometimes we still show off and testify ourselves through propounding the Bible to win the esteem and support of others and to establish our own position and image. Although some people forsake, expend, toil, and work, they possess many impurities, and they do these things for the sake of gaining rewards and crowns and so that they may enjoy the blessings of the heavenly kingdom. We can see that we pay a price and expend ourselves, not with an honest heart out of consideration for God's burden and to satisfy God's will, but rather we work, we preach the gospel, we give things up and expend ourselves in order to satisfy our own selfish desires. And we struggle for our own futures and positions 
This is not worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Paying a price and expending in this way is bargaining with God, and it cannot win the Lord's approval. The Lord Jesus said, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, and in your name have cast out devils, and in your name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Book of Matthew chapter 7, verses 22 to 23. The Lord condemned people who preached and worked for him as people who work iniquity. This was because they did not worship God in spirit and in truth, nor did they expend sincerely for God. Instead, they wished to work for the Lord in exchange for rewards and blessings. They struggled and toiled for the sake of their own final destinations and for fame, fortune, and also status. Ultimately, not only did they not win the Lord's approval for the price they paid, but on the contrary, they were condemned by the Lord. Let's take the Pharisees of that time, for example. For generations, the Pharisees read the scriptures. They attended the temple in all weathers to worship Jehovah God. They traveled over land and sea to spread the gospel of Jehovah. They expended by giving up their families and businesses. They suffered much. And nothing they did was done for the sake of loving God or even satisfying God. Or rather, it was done for the sake of their own positions and livelihoods. When the Lord Jesus came to perform his work, they knew perfectly well that works and words of the Lord possessed authority and it possessed power, and that it all came from God. Yet, they did not seek or investigate at all. Instead, they defined the Lord according to their own notions and imaginings, believing that a man who was not called Messiah could not possibly be God. In particular, when they saw the growing number of common people who followed the Lord Jesus, they became afraid that no one would follow them anymore and that their positions and livelihood were unsustainable. And so, they took every opportunity to attack, judge, condemn, and blaspheme him, until finally they crucified the Lord Jesus. From this we can see that the Pharisees did not worship God in spirit and in truth. They appeared pious on the outside, but their essence was hypocritical and deceitful, and therefore the Lord Jesus rebuked them. We all know the saying, but woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, 13. And the Lord Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Matthew 22, 37. So God requires that we worship, that we pursue love of him, and that when we expend for God and busy ourselves working for God, it should be done upon the foundation of loving God and satisfying God. We should sincerely be considerate of God's burden and satisfy his will, free from any contamination or personal bargainings and not do things to gain blessings or crowns. Only this is the worship of the Lord in spirit and in truth. Let's take Peter, for example. After the Lord Jesus resurrected, he asked Peter three times, Simon, son of Jonas, love you me? Feed my sheep, John 21:16. From his question, Peter understood the Lord's requirements and the task the Lord had entrusted to him to pursue becoming someone who loved and satisfied God, to do everything in his power to feed God's sheep and to complete God's commission. Peter listened to the task the Lord had entrusted him in his heart. And in his later work, he sought even more to love and satisfy God with all his heart and soul. He spread the Lord's gospel in every direction, and he testified the Lord's words and will to even more people. In his work, he exalted and testified the Lord in every way, and he led his brothers and sisters using the truth he understood. He brought them all before the Lord and taught them to respect the Lord above all. Furthermore, when Peter encountered persecution and adversity, he was able to swear loyalty to the Lord unto death, so that, in the end, 
he sacrificed all he had, even his life by the Lord. He was crucified hanging upside down, thus bearing testimony to his extreme love for God and his willingness to obey until death. Peter worshipped God in spirit and in truth. He expended with a heart that loved God, and in the end, he became someone who delighted the Lord, and whom the Lord praised. So from our fellowship, we can see that if we want to worship God in spirit and in truth, we should use our hearts to get closer to God, seek to understand God's will and requirements from His words, practice God's words in our daily lives, and not cling to rituals and rules. And at the same time, we must be able to sincerely forsake and expend for God without asking for anything in return or laying down any conditions. But instead, we should love and satisfy the Lord with our heart and our soul. And in this way, we can worship God in spirit and in truth. Only by practicing in this way can we understand the truth and achieve growth in our lives. And only then will we win God's approval and ex through expending. Amen. Well, my dear brothers and sisters, that's it for now. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please click on the subscribe button and see you on the next topic. Stay blessed. Bye.